It is Thursday, March 28th. Welcome to Menace to Sports. I got my throwback Jed Fish shirt on. You mad, bro? If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. And that sucks to be you. But we got a lot to talk about. Everybody's telling me Julian saying is fucking the next Trevor Lawrence. Best. He's going to start as a true freshman. And we know that through three, two and a half weeks or three weeks of spring ball. And I don't believe them, motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I haven't talked to anyone. I have no insight, no intel, but you never, I don't. You actually never coached at Ohio State either. I didn't coach at Ohio State. Yeah. I actually made all this shit up. It's this, all made up. I mean, I'm just a fucking drunk, homeless drunk who come stumbled upon Chris and we talk about football. I don't know anything, but well, that's what we need to talk about. We need to talk about Julius saying because I broke him down on bourbon and ball. Phenomenally talented high school quarterback. I think he absolutely has a chance to be good enough to start as a freshman. It's just highly, highly unlikely. So that's the main topic. Before we get started, I'm curious in the chat, do you think he's going to start? Fucking put your nuts on the table. Do you think Julian start saying starts game one for the Buckeyes? Yes or no? That's all I need. Y or N? Will he start? That's my question. Chris, how's your week going? Good, good, man. It's it's Thursday. It's our Friday. It is our Friday. We have yeah. no show tomorrow. I'm going to Chicago. Figured I'd give Chris the day off. Pat still has to work, though. He has to be in here from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Honestly, I kind of want to work, bro, with this badass TV hey, working. We, we got a TV. I'm going to show I'm gonna show you a picture. We're going to tweet a picture out of our setup now because I can see myself. See, it, it looks weird when I look up, though. But I can see how many people are in here. It's kind of – it's really feeling – yeah, studio in this here. Is, this is kind of cool as shit. Like, hey, this is gangster. Yeah, no, it is. Like, we're just like, I mean, I guess people don't see really the on screen stuff, see it on screen, but like, every couple weeks we add an, a new little wrinkle in the offense, in the good old offense. Hey, just got to add a trick play every now and then. I got right. two more things I got to do to this studio just on the immediate front. And then once we do, we'll give a studio tour. Uh, it's just a mess right now. We got cords everywhere. We got to. Clean it up a little bit. Make yeah. it presentable for we the We got army. honey sticks everywhere, dude. Yeah, fucking Chris. Chris eats, drinks tea, and I come in here, and there's fucking tea wrappers everywhere. I'm going to yeah. get it. Number one thing I need to get is a trash can for these motherfuckers around here. It's like Because there's not like there's not hey, one right see, outside the door. You see Pat got Italian dressing on his desk. Oh, no. See what I mean? Can't do anything around here. But <laughs> we got a lot to talk about, as we always do. So I'm excited for it. Let's get this thing started. Lugie! Let them know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get the show. Let's get to the show. It's kind of cool, bro, because I don't know if you've seen that in a while. No. A little Lukey, but. A little Lukey. I have to ask you, how, how's your week going? I, I I really had it in my notes today that I was going to ask you, how's your day going? Yeah, week I, going? Typical, typical shit from Chris. It's been ki a killer. Good. For those of you that are any level of subscription on Patreon, I've been putting out these workouts, and this shit is, it's working. I mean, my body looks different. My strength is going crazy. Um, today was a banger. We got to a one rep max on bench. I don't need to put out there what it was, but, um, hey bro, no matter what you say, bro, people will just like, it doesn't matter. Get crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the most I've done since I played college football. So it's the shit is working. That's all mm -hmm. I care about. And I'm just, I got my eyesight on a set on a certain number that I want to get to. And we're, yeah. we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. And you know what? I had the whole fam in the gym today. I mean, Justine and I go every day, right? right? I took Cam and Quinn. They, they got a workout in. Luke and Lily were in the kids' club playing sharks and minnows and doing kids' yoga. Like, we went six deep up in there. Six deep. <laughs> six that's, deep. That's enough, to, that's enough for a starting five and then one, one, one bench player. Yeah, we, Luke's coming off the bench right now. Yeah. Is Actually, he, yeah. after the way Justine shot today in sport cardio when we played one-on-one, -on -one, she's coming off the bench. You know, I, I mean, let, let her come off the bench. Obviously, like, the streaky shooters come off the bench. Usually, you need the uh, you need to have an enforcer start the game, right? Luke oh, yeah. feels like an enforcer. Yeah, Luke's going to foul out anyways. <laughs> He's got to start. You're Bill Lambeer. <laughs> <laughs> Throw an elbow. Make sure they, uh, yeah, don't, don't come down the lane. I'm, I'm good, though, dog. Thank you for asking. I did ask. That's twice. Um, this is for you and for the chat. If all three of these quarterbacks were in the same draft class, who are you taking first, and what is your one through three? Andrew Luck, Caleb Williams, Trevor Lawrence. Um, I'm taking Andrew Luck one. I don't know, man. Trevor Lawrence has been a disappointment. And I mean, I anticipate Caleb Williams will also be a disappointment. <laughs> but I know Trevor Lawrence has been a disappointment. So that's a tough one for me. I think I'm going to go Caleb Williams, then Trevor Lawrence. Trevor's so confusing to me because he'll have the game where it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's number one overall pick. But coming out of college, not even a question. Right. I'm, I'm going luck, 
Trevor Lawrence, <coughs> Caleb Williams. <coughs> I just know what happened after Trevor Lawrence got drafted. He hasn't been terrible, but he's been disappointing for the number one overall pick. He just he's a little bit too inconsistent for a number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. Like his highs are really fuck. I mean, shit, the playoff game. What was it? Four first half interceptions and then four second half touchdowns. Yeah. Like you, obviously you don't want that. Um, I have had a hard time racking my brain for someone who has been more can't miss as a prospect than Andrew Luck. And I was young when Andrew Luck was yeah. was, you know, coming up and I opted to stay at Stanford next year was with Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. But, but there was no doubt in my mind he was going to be a really good football player. Yeah, no doubt. And obviously he had a shorter career than most people anticipated because mm -hmm. he kind of walked away from the game, but he was really good when he played. Like when you think of red flagless quarterbacks, I don't know if anybody has no red flags, but if I'm thinking about guys with the least amount of red flags, Andrew Luck probably had the least, maybe, at least in modern NFL draftability. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. And he also gave birth to my favorite Twitter follow mm -hmm. back when he was playing that Colonel, Colonel Andrew Luck, yeah. where he would write letters home to his mom on Twitter. Fucking hilarious. And then he fucking dressed up as that dude. Yeah. This is <laughs> awesome. Which, which really, really cool shit. This one also from one of the generals. They just want to ask this because I told him it's mailbag. You this know, is a wild question. Mailbag the other day before. Would you rather have to spend 45 minutes locked in a room with the diddler or an hour locked in the room with Derek McCord and you can only talk to McCord about how great his son is and why he was rightfully the starter? <laughs> I mean, just a, a wild question. But but you left a loophole here that I'm going to take full advantage of. I was about to say, I know the answer. I mean, this is really easy, right? If you said I was, like, handcuffed and tied up with the diddler, totally different. You mean I just get to be in a room with him? I'm beating the fuck out of P. Diddy for 45 minutes. Beating his ass. I mean, I will elect to do that. Mm -hmm. Put me in a room with the diddler. Diddler, 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 diddle this, motherfucker. <laughs> diddle this is crazy. Um, that's going you know, to get clipped up. Someone's going to clip out the first part and being like, I don't care. Jack Shed locked me in a room with the diddler. Freaky ass boy. Hey, I'm <laughs> confident in who I am. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> hey, hey, put man. it out there. I don't care. Uh, hump day was probably a good one for bro. But any, I would pick <laughs> I, I would pick Diddy also. Yeah, I would for sure. I would definitely beat Diddy up. I mean, there's no way in hell I could lock myself in a room with Derek McCord and just talk about how great Kyle is and how he sh was rightfully the starter. There's no way. Yeah, definitely. Just, couldn't um, do it. Definitely couldn't do it. Uh, separate news, you know, not to get too far off the rails. Happy um, opening day, Zach. Opening day. And I know there's mixed emotions on the sport of baseball. But yes, as, there are. I, I love the sport of baseball. I'm not a huge fan of watching it on TV, but I just love the sport. My son plays it. My daughter plays softball. Obviously, when we went to the Ohio State softball game last night, the by home, the way. The home opener, bro. Home opener. Beat Dayton 6-2. to two. Really good game. Um, really, Ohio State looked really good. But I, I don't know how good Dayton is. My daughter told me they're not... It's not like football. They're not that bad. But Ohio State was man, woman handling them. Handled them. Handled them. Yeah. And uh, it was awesome. It was fun. The whole the whole fam went. We were blanketed up. It was cold as shit. Um, kind of cool. When you watch the girls throw, you're like, damn, who can hit that? Like, were they throwing that hard? Yeah, they were throwing gas. Or could you? were you also watching it like, man, I bet Quinn could throw that hard in a couple years. Oh, yeah. I, I could definitely. I think Quinn could throw that hard in a couple years. Quinn throws hard as fuck. Hard as shit. And these girls are big. Like, I'm looking at Quinn. She's. She's tall, she's long, but she's skinny. Once she get, gets like gets gains some weight, like gets you know goes through puberty and matures, and she she's gonna bring some some gas behind that thing. I like baseball. I'm excited for baseball this year. Um, obviously, like it's such a long season, so the first you know 100 or so games, I usually if I have baseball on, it's just kind of in the background as I do other work. But that's I like what, going to baseball. That's games. what it is for me. Like right. I love the Indians. Um, that's obviously my team. And anytime I can't watch them. That's the real problem with baseball. We could go on a whole tirade about the, how they're ruining the sport because they're greedy fucks. And it's a Bally Sports won't agree with this. And I can't get, you can't get it unless you've got actual hard line cable. You can't get it any other way. Direct TV, YouTube TV, none of that shit. So it, it's a shame, but we'll throw a game on. And my son is so into baseball. So it's great background noise because you hear a home run. You're like, oh shit, he just tanked one. Like, yeah. And you always get the replay because yeah. there's not shit else going on. In fact, they'll, oh, yeah. they'll show you the home run replay for four innings. Yeah, you, it's all, you're going to see that home run like six times in the next ten minutes. My favorite, I, I love seeing double plays. Like a smoothly run double play, just that's that's one of those things. You just, I just love things. the freaky plays, right? Like, and obviously this is a very, but like those those clips of like outfielders gunning a guy at third, and you're like, oh my god, like he. 
The ball never had any arc to it from all the way in center field. That Acuna throw from right. Acuna throw from right, going all the way back to Bo Jackson, gunning a guy on a tag out at first base. Just like, I love that shit. I mean, throwing it because my son plays center field most of the time, and he's got a little arm on him, and he throws kids out. And it's like, that to me is the equivalent of like when Quinn blocks somebody in volleyball or in football when there's a big hit. Like, it's just like when you gun somebody from the outfield, that shit is like, it's almost like a shark going to attack prey. Like they're running back and that ball's coming and you're like, oh shit, he's going to get him. Bang, got him. I mean, to me is like, I played a lot of baseball. I'm not a very powerful hitter. So I never got like the experience of like hitting a home run on somebody like you dunked on someone, but the throwing somebody out. Oh, that gets me going. I also played center Zach. And the first time I cussed in front of my mom in terms of like at a game, it's like I threw somebody out of third and yelled, wish a nigga would. I felt so cool. <laughs> felt so cool. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't try me. Try me. It's like insulting when someone tries to run on you, you know? It is. It's like, what do you think this is? I love baseball. But, you know, we we probably lost half our listener base with that little baseball yeah. segment. Numbers just dropped like crazy. But <laughs> fell off a cliff. Happy opening day. Yeah. And uh, Otani will not be. No charges have been pressed on his boy. People are wondering, okay, like, why is Otani, you know, he said someone stole $4.5 million from him, but he's not reporting it to the authorities. What are your takes on Otani and the gambling with the interpreter? <laughs> I mean, also? listen, it's a little red flag, right? Like, if there's no criminal charges, like, did he really do it or is that just his excuse? But then I thought about it, and I'm sitting here with Chris talking about it before the show. Like, if my childhood friend, this is the $4.5 million to Shohei Otani is like $500 to me. If my childhood friend that I've known forever stole $500 from me, I absolutely would cut him off, never talk to him again, fuck that guy for stealing from me. But at the same time, like, I don't want him to go to prison. Like, he can just fuck off for $500. Now, if he, like, stole my life savings, yeah, yeah, we got to prosecute that. But $4.5 million to show Hayes, like, and then send his childhood friend to prison, I, I don't think I would press charges. That's fair. That's fair. To me, it's like, damn... Shohei's going to have a tough time clearing his name if he doesn't report it to the authorities. That's the other problem, right? That friend put, yeah. in him, put him in a really bad spot, not only stealing from him, but now all the question marks. Like, did he know? Was he a part of it? Was he gambling? Like, he could, he could lose his career. And for me, I think that might be why I press charges. I think something's, something's going to happen to bro no matter what. Yeah. Like, bro's in trouble. Bro might get jail time, whatever. So if I'm Otani to kind of avoid the black eye or the ketchup stain on my career, I think I would... You know, at least at least report a little bit. I don't know how you report. That's a if he bit. really didn't know, though. Yeah, because if he really did know, oh brother. And then he reports it. Yeah. Oh, buddy, that that's some low character right there. One text message. Well, well, they'll look into it, and if investigation gets open, you go to discovery. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Lost <laughs> his phone, his iPad, his fucking everything. Yeah. His, his phone. I left the, it in Japan. <laughs> his phone's at the bottom of the ocean with Diddy's right. phone. Both phones. I'm fucking with it. <laughs> gone um i you know i like the little the, the little funny shit so the, the uh someone did the google thing right it's oh, like man. most like you type in look at these type in why are and you're you're browns most people want to know why are the browns orange do you know why the browns are orange uh i don't i don't <laughs> me either i was hoping you would know i don't but look just some of these are hilarious why are the chiefs the best team <laughs> why are the uh Redskins ahead of the Patriots in the draft. My favorite one is the Giants, of course. Why are the Giants in New Jersey? <laughs> right. In New York Giants in New Jersey. But like, how about this one? Why why are the Texans called the Strouds? <laughs> like, you can't be that dumb, right? Why are the Titans so ugly? <laughs> why are the 49ers named that? Hey, I, I know people in Atlanta aren't looking this up. Why are the Falcons called the Dirty Birds? People are right. just are culturalists. Or like, why are the Jaguars called Duval? Mm-hmm. I mean, I know I lived in Florida for five years, but it's Duval County. I mean, I guess you got to Google search that. Yeah. Why are my favorite is why are the Lions good this year? <laughs> that's, that's that's the mark of you've been bad for right. a long time. That's, that's how you know you've been down for a long time. Where the number one Google search about your team is why are the Lions good this year? Like what happened? Why are they good? They're not supposed to be good. <laughs> like that is what that SpongeBob meme. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> that's, that's what everybody's just saying about. I mean, I used to make fun of the Lions. Like it was nothing, bro. Like they were the joke. I mean, they were worse than the Browns there for a stretch. Um, Jim Harbaugh, early coach of the year favorite. He's at plus 650 for next season. Zach, it's funny because for the majority of his time, with the exception of the last year in college football, he was never widely regarded or respected as a top five college football coach. Yeah. Should he have been, though? Because 
it feels like, I mean, he's coveted enough by the NFL. Yeah. It seems like he's viewed as, as a, a really good coach. Do you like the odds of him being the favorite? And was Harbaugh ever really a top five coach in college football? Well, it's hard to argue and deny what he did, right? I mean, he slayed the beast that he couldn't slay. Granted, after Urban left. Yeah. But at the same time, he did something that we haven't really seen in a long time. I mean, going back, I don't even know the last time, but back into the Trestle days, maybe, where he wasn't recruiting at a really high clip. He wasn't getting a bunch of five stars. He wasn't taking the Alabama-Georgia model. He was truly developing and coaching. And he went 15-0 and and won a national championship with that model. Who else has done that? I mean, just just Tress. I mean, it's been a while, yeah. whoever it is. And I I, I mean, I, I think he did an outstanding job at Michigan. Me too. Why do you think he was never regarded as though it's a top five coach? Because he's fucking weird. Okay. He's goofy. And then the Connor Stallion stuff. And everyone's like, everyone want or wants a reason to hate Jim Harbaugh. He's like that weird kid in school. You're know, like, I don't know if we want a reason or if he just keeps lobbing them to Well, us. that's what it is, right? It's like the weird kid in school. You're like, I don't want to be mean to him. I, I don't want to like not like this kid, but he just wiped the booger on the on the, the desk at school. <laughs> like, dude, like, God, I can't like him. I'm, I, I don't want to dislike him. The way you're saying it, it's like, you're just leaving me no choice. I have right. to bully you. Right. It's like you you changed for gym class. You got skid marks. Like, dude, wipe your ass. Change your underwear. Like, how am I supposed to like you? It make you he just makes it impossible. Do you think it, like, now would you have ever had him as a top five coach in college football the last three or four oh, years? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Okay. He's but so most people wouldn't. He's so confusing to me because, like, I don't know if he falls into the class of, okay, he won a natty, but so did Ed Orgeron. Well, he's definitely not in that class. I mean, no, I mean, come on. He made what three straight playoffs, right? Finally, won the big one, beat Ohio State three years, three three peat Big Ten champs. Like, the guy did a good job. His, you have to be able, be able to admit that his resume probably like if you just did resume based in college football for that last at least three year run, you'd probably have him as a top three coach. But nobody ever had him as one. No, no, because I'm telling you, that's because that's is why. it just because he's weird. Just because he's weird, and he's he's so he gives you so many reasons to dislike him, because like he, like Dabo's a, I guess Dabo same way. Like Dabo's a better coach than Jim, maybe or not. I mean, think about it. Like, who's better than the two, Dabo or Jim Harbaugh? Well, well, Dabo has a longer resume and has had more success. But here's a better question: a lot most people would say Ryan Day is one of the top five coaches in college football, right? Yeah, for the most part, he's got two Big Ten championships, right? Zero natties since he got hired. Since he got hired, Jim Harbaugh has three Big Ten championships and a natty. So, like, it, you kind of got to go both ways, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, it's funny because I think that the Ryan Day thing is more about I would rather have him as my coach oh, than Harbaugh, too. which falls back to the weirdo conversation yes. and not the, like, on-field stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So. Like, it, And that's a question for the chat. I know we got a majority Buckeye fans in here. But since Ryan Day got hired, from then till now, Who's who is the better coach, Harbaugh or Ryan Day? It's a fair question. Who is it, Day, Harbaugh, Day or Jim? Jim I mean, or Day? I mean, since since Day got hired, I, I, it's pretty easy, right? I think so. I mean, it's got to be pretty. It, it absolutely has. Now, to be. the only caveat to that is Stallions. Stallions, like he was cheating like a motherfucker. So, like, is that enough to discredit everything he did? It yeah. might be. It is funny because they went kind of two different paths, right? Like. Like Ryan Day, a lot of like the the love and like oh we love this fast cars because you have all the talent in the world mm -hmm. and like the the recruiting goes kind of into his coaching <coughs> flowers I guess like into into his coaching resume where the recruiting doesn't go into the resume of Jim Harbaugh but Jim's got the natty and the winning record of the two yeah so hmm. but they're saying they're saying it is Ryan because he didn't have to cheat. It's to, to, I, I, I totally buy that argument. And then here's here's the next question for you over the chat. If you took both of their best teams, who wins? Mm. Well, which what was Ryan's best team? Definitely 19. Yeah. And so, like, the part of it is, oh, yeah, Michigan won this natty, but 19 Ohio State would have won this natty. Like, so, so much luck goes in the, into the natty. Yeah, kind of who, who, what yeah, the national like, landscape looks like. like who you beat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think 19 Ohio State is probably the best team of the, whatever, 10 teams that were put together, Michigan and Ohio State, since Ryan Day got hired. I think the 19 Ohio State team was probably the best. Yeah, and then what was the second best? Probably this past year's Michigan. 
And then, so that's one, one. And then if you go to that third team, where, where do you Fuck, go? I don't know, Chris. You're asking a lot of memory. Well, the right the now. third one gets weird because it's like, like you would probably prefer the 2020. Uh, to Ohio State team, but they lost to Michigan. Absolutely. But then the, uh, that team lost to TCU, and so that's when you get like the weird fucking layers and stacks, and you turn into that guy with the with the tie on, point to the board, talking yeah. about you know. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh god, where the fuck am I? I think I just had a brain aneurysm. And then something. you wake up and it's 2035, and <laughs> RJ Day just won his second natty coaching for Clemson. Pat, get us to commercial break. We'll be right back after this. Menace Army. It's not time to stop gambling. I know that much. Football season's over, but it's still a great opportunity to bet on some basketball. I'm not a basketball fan, but I will throw some money on some props. Shout out our guy Mensa, who will give you all the prop bets you need. And as always, the best sports book out there, my bookie, has got your back. You can parlay anything in the world. I'm talking rebounds, assists, probably how what, what color Gatorade they get when they go to the bench. You can bet it all at my bookie. All you got to do is go to my bookie, use promo code Menace, and get that deposit bonus. Right now, use our promo code and go lock in for basketball season. It's a time to build your bankroll because March Madness is a month away, baby. Mensa's got you with the picks. My bookie's the best sports book in the world. Go check it out now and get that free cashish. Free money. Hey, it's March Madness today. Sweet 16. It is? Shit, did it already tip off? What time does it start? Are we rooting for Clemson? I don't fucking know. Sure. Dick Bender. Dick Bender, the man. <laughs> Look this up while we talk. Um, I just put this in the show because I'm still pushing a narrative that I think is important. Dan Campbell said he's very excited that Justin Fields is no longer on the Bears. I'm not going to lie. It's nice to have Justin Fields out of that division. Football guys talking about football. Football guys talking about players, right? Mm -hmm. I, I get it. The media wants to to crucify the kid, and and he he was a, he's a bust. And I mean, to be fair. Football guys also said he's only worth a sixth round pick, but those are personnel guys. Yeah, those are personnel guys. Those guys don't even know how to tie cleats. They really don't. But when Dan Campbell comes out and says, I'm I'm really happy I don't have to play that guy, that means he's probably pretty good, right? Or has, at least has a chance to be dynamic and, and effective. It's funny because I was reading the comments and everyone's like, oh, he sneaked this in Caleb Williams because Dan's a man-man and Caleb is a, not a man's man. Oh, can you <laughs> I would pay I, if if this happens. If Caleb Williams goes to the Bears, I would pay and I mean an insane amount of money to just be behind the scenes with the Lions on game week against the Bears. Yeah. I want to hear what this motherfucker says about him. I, I need to hear all the Dan Campbell quotes, the the clips. Like I need it all. If Dan Campbell was the coach of the Bears, they would not be drafting Caleb Williams. Hell no. Same with Rabes. No, <laughs> no. Got to have a select group of coaches. Um, I found this insane from John Mara, but I had to throw it to you on the show. He said that they didn't trade Saquon Barkley. That's the Giants owner. said they didn't trade Saquon Barkley when they had a 2-6 and six record because they were still trying to win and hoped he could re-sign him. They yeah. lost Saquon, who ended up signing with the Eagles. Yeah, they're rival. Division rival Eagles, by the way. I mean, that's just absolutely idiot idiotic, right? I mean, you disrespected him. Didn't give him the long-term contract. You're two and six. What are you trying to win? You're gonna have to run the table to to make the playoffs. Like what? And so you got nothing out of Saquon Barkley. Why would you admit this? Yeah. Why would you say this publicly? Like you were in a very public contract dispute with him because he wanted 15 million a year, and you were giving Daniel Jones 40 a year. This is you not. You were even... two and <sighs> six. Your starting quarterback tore his ACL. Like what are you trying to win? Just wild times. Wild times. But this is not even egg on his face. This is like he grabbed an egg and smashed it on his forehead. Uh, this is worse than that. This is eagle nut on his face. <laughs> eagle right? nut on his face. Uh, just, that's an interesting optic. I'm just saying, bro. That's that's the that's the ego come shot to the face because there's no way he thought getting in front of a camera and saying that was going to do anything except for make people think, oh, great. This is who we got running the fucking team. Right. Oh, look, the future looks bright in yeah. New Jersey. That's why I'm a Steelers fan now. Carson, thanks for the five. Any standout memory of Bradley Roby? I feel like bro is a dog and always brought the juice. Yeah, he always, I mean, he was a great player. Really highly competitive. Uh, my favorite two stories are when Michael Thomas got covered by him and started fighting him only because he got covered by him. Like, like Roby didn't do anything, just covered him really well. And then, then Mike started fighting him. Um, and then the other one was when, because Roby was not, like, when it was time to go, he worked, but, like, a Sunday practice after a game Saturday, like, that motherfucker was not trying to do anything. 
Like he was very superstar mentality. And so he was giving shitty effort in seven on seven. And Urban looked at Tom Herman and was like, hey, throw it at Roby every play. <laughs> I, and he looked at, he looked at the court, Braxton and was like, throw it at Roby every play. I don't care the coverage, just throw it over there. And we were cooking him because he wasn't going hard. Not because like we he wasn't good enough or we were beating him. He just wasn't going hard. And he like, after like the sixth one, like yelled at Urban across the field like, I'm not fucking stupid. I know what you're doing right now. I'm not here for it. And so then, of course, the next play, he he was pissed, and he went hard, picked it off, like returned it for a touchdown, punted the ball, got kicked out of practice. And you're like, see, if you just go hard, you're that guy. I love that. Shout out. Shout out Bradley Roby. Pump block expert, Bradley Roby. Hey, that was my guy now. I think he blocked two or three punts for me that he year. He blocked three, and then two of them are back-to-back -back weeks, like in big games, big moments, needed a pump Shit, block. We Michigan State, Indiana. Yeah. Like, it's really how – I can't remember which game. But that's how we won the game. Mm -hmm. No, he was a dude, man. Yeah, he's a fucking dude. He was a dude. DJ, thanks for the five. Aussie football, Japanese baseball season to bet on after MM. Thank goodness. Now need to need a book that takes spring game live player props. Georgia over two and a half DUIs. <laughs> Y'all are nuts. <laughs> oh, this is dope. Third base investigators, thanks for the five. Anyone know any good cigars to pair with bourbon? I'm looking to start a cigar collection to pair with my whiskey collection. Um, I I I love cigars. I don't smoke them though. Um, I just I hate how I feel like the afterwards the next day even just that yuck mouth. I hate it. And even when I smoke like lighter ones, it, I just I don't know. I'm not, I love when I'm smoking the cigar. I hate everything that happens after. But my favorite. Cigars are Padron Anniversary Series. If it, It's fucking outstanding. I smoked a, a cigar at uh, at Justin Fields' NFL debut. Don't remember any of it. Got so fucking hammered. I ended up puking on the bathroom floor Jesus. and then leave it. It was a bad deal. Sounds like a bad deal. <laughs> yeah, it was a bad deal. So My, my boy told <laughs> me running the 40-yard dash, and I just ate shit in the middle of it. I just <laughs> was running in his fucking face planting. <laughs> bad deal. Bad deal. So, no, I don't know any cigars is the answer to that one. Keel, thanks for the two. One thing me and DJ agree on, Japanese baseball. Y'all are degenerates for sure. The truest. Gorky, thanks for the two. Quinn to Ohio State. Can she be the menace to sports NIO athlete? Oh, she will be. Mm -hmm. She absolutely will be. We'll see. I mean, you know, that's, that's a – she's really talented, and that is, but that is a big, big place. I mean, Ohio State in, in any sport, that is – you got to be in the top 1% of 1%. And I've, I've told both my kids that. And I, you got to be, we got to be realistic, right? With your kids. It's like, I saw that one. Was it Brandon? No, what's his, fuck, I forget his name. The comedian who was talking about, uh, we got to be, we've got to be honest with these white kids. Like, <laughs> I want to be a running back in the NFL. Like, oh, Tommy, you're Irish. Yeah. <laughs> like, just study accounting. Yeah. Or linebacker it up. Yeah. But, but I mean, and I'm not saying my kids are, are definitely athletically gifted. I don't I don't know if they're ever going to be that level, but but Quinn definitely has a chance. Speed, thanks for the ten. I've heard several people talk about players not bringing it and needing uh, a foot up their butt. Why would an athlete that talented not do everything they can to play at the next level? Such a waste of opportunity. It is funny to hear that right as soon as we talk about the Roby story. Yeah, it is, and it's like. You have to remember, these kids have never not been that talented. Right. Like, it's always easy to look at it from, like, my perspective. Like, I was never as talented as Michael Thomas. I mean, not even close. And so, like, for me, it's like, Jesus, if I had that, I would be a monster. And he obviously became one. But they don't have that perspective. They've just always been like that. And so they they get lazy at times. And I, I get it. Like, Mike was a, a great example of somebody that he, he just was seeking – something even bigger even greater and that's why he worked the way he worked but i've seen a lot of kids that are talented and just they just waste it yeah i mean you could be spoiled by things you take for granted right absolutely like money's one of them talent's one of them size is one of them yeah it's the same. no different than the rich kid that was born on third base like had a trust fund mm -hmm. like got hired out of after he failed out of college got hired by daddy's fortune 500 company and still is fucking doing cocaine and going to strip clubs and not making anything of himself it's like just Take it all for granted, and you don't grind to maximize your opportunities. Exactly. Thomas, thanks for becoming a member. Appreciate you. We're up to 115 members. I 115 believe. members. If you want to be a member, it's only $4.99 a month. It's a way to support the platform, a true member of the Menace Army, and you get a bunch of shit. You get a, a custom Abbey that evolves the longer you've been a member. It's kind of a flex. 
You get some emojis. Chris is going to someday put together a keyboard, I'm told. Yeah, why can't I get access to it? We'll, we'll uh, talk after the show. I got to let him in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, champ. <laughs> I just don't want him to Otani me, you know? Otani. Yeah. <laughs> um, EK, thanks for the five. You cannot ignore ha hairballs cheating without it. Day has at least four Big Ten titles. Yeah, I mean, there were some really close games. Really close. I mean, they've all been really close, right? Well, one wasn't. But there's some close games that you have to think that those those signals certainly could have been the difference maker. Yeah, I mean, I keep just going back to the moment where CJ, I mean, it, it seemed like CJ was like, why are they calling out our plays? <laughs> like, yeah. like, what is this? What's what's going yeah. on? Um, but also, Ohio State shot themselves in the foot in that 2022 game enough times. That's what I mean. I think it's an excuse. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm not saying it didn't have an impact, but they could have won all the, both of those games. I think they lose to Illinois, though, the year before without the signs. They did lose to Illinois. Yeah, they lost. They the lost signs. to Illinois. Let's not forget that. That shit means something to me. <laughs> Dylan, thanks for the five. Bronny and Michi are going to look good in Scarlet and Gray. You got Bronny hitting the portal, heading uh, home. Is that what they're saying? That's what I mean, DG, my guy Dylan knows a thing or two. I'm gonna, I, I might hit him up at some point, see what the deal is. <laughs> I don't care. That'd sure, be, bring him be, home. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be cool to see Bron courtside. Yeah. I think Bronny's a nice seventh man. Oh, geez. DJ, <laughs> thanks for the two and the wrench. 20, duck 21, asterisk 22, asterisk 23, and then another asterisk. Okay. I don't I don't count 23 as an asterisk, but 21-22, I agree. And they definitely ducked the 20 game. Yeah. It's always been that on this show. That's a win for Ohio State because they were going to boat race the fuck out of them. <laughs> I mean, it was going to get ugly. It was. James, thanks for the two. Stop the cap. We know Pat is Mensa. Need a review. What, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it's lure. It's like menaces. We don't have much menace sports lure. This is one of them. It's like my hairline is lure. You ever watch like, Wizard of Oz? Don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. Man behind the screen. Yeah. <laughs> he's in Pat's in the corner where he's gonna right. stay. Don't like, worry about Mensa. Like my height is lure, you know. Yeah, Chris is five two. I don't know what's lure with you. You got it. You got you had you had to come to the live show to meet Pat. What's lure to me? I don't know. Yeah, like what's like what's the mysterious thing about Zach? What happens when the lights go off? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> and with that being said, I want to talk about J.J. McCarthy because, you know, we're at the part of the draft process, approaching the silliest season with the draft coming up, where we've got his passing charts um, and where he struggles in certain sides of the field. Yeah. Zach, does this concern you at all? We got Drake May at the top, Jane Daniels second, and then J.J. McCarthy third. J.J. McCarthy on his little list has the most read of all those guys. Mm -hmm. Does that worry you, or do you think volume would solve that? I mean, I think I think style of style of play. I'm gonna slide over so you can see me better. Style of play matters, right? Um, certainly, throwing the ball more, you can get in a rhythm. I'm not trying to make excuses for the kid. I mean, obviously, it's it's red flags, and we've talked about those red flags. We've talked about those question marks. But I mean, it's not that much different than Jaden Daniels. Just look at the charts. He's got pink all over the right, bright red on ten to twenty yard throws, which is what what I call NFL throws, right? He's green across the board, deep balls. He was phenomenal. He also won the fucking Heisman. Yeah. So, like, he's not that much different than Jaden Daniels. Now, you look at Drake May, and that's why I have him as the top quarterback in the draft, probably, because he's green all over the place. He is, except for that right side, just a little concerning, right? Or yeah. do we not worry about that? That's no, so a little concerning, but you really got to watch the film to see why. Like, so, talk to me about quarterbacks and their drop backs looking left or right. Like, what? Well, like, it, I mean, depends. Why on the is the left side so strong? It depends on the quarterback. Like one thing about the left side is, is one, it's your blind side. So that a lot of times is harder. Like you look at JJ McCarthy, you look at Jaden Daniels, that's harder to the left, right? But it also, when you go to throw that way, it creates that restrictor where you can get the whip and throw and, and you don't have to force it. Where you go to the right side, it's a lot of times without getting the proper footwork, you could just use arm talent to get the ball there. And maybe you're not as accurate. You're already set up to have good footwork to the left. It's just blind. So, I don't read too much into this. I mean, I unless there's something glaring, like Drake made to the right, that's that's kind of problematic. Like yeah. fifty nine point nine passer rating from ten to ten to twenty yards. But here's the other thing, Chris. How many drops are there? Because passer rating, if, if it's incomplete, it's incomplete. They don't take into account drops. That's why I lo I love looking at adjusted completion percentage. Like I don't know, did he throw the bitch on the money? Yeah. And was the kid covered? Yeah, like what receiver is over yeah, there? Yeah, and like if the kid got covered on a comeback and he he throws a fucking pinpoint accurate ball and it gets broken up, like that's on the receiver. Like that, that's on Drake May. 
Yeah, I really want some tape to back this up. If you look at Drake May um, to the left, his passer rating between 10 and 19 yards. And that's honestly been the mo- that that's the one metric you can look at in terms mm-hmm. of like how good are they between 10 and 20 yards in terms of NFL success. Yeah. That's like the big staple that I found the last like four or five years when I've done my homework on it. Him being at 141 to the left, which is so ridiculously high. Yeah. Then being at 131 in the middle, which is still a ridiculous mark, dropping all the way down to 59 to yeah. the other side. Yeah. That I got to see some tape to back that up because that to me sounds like either he has some mechanical deficiencies or whoever receivers on the right side was not doing a good job. Yeah, we'll watch the film. And that, that's coming in a, a bourbon and ball, I think, in two or three weeks. We're going to break down a Drake May game. Because I want to see. I mean, I've, I've, I've watched him plenty this past year, but I, I never did a, a full coach's film breakdown of him. Right. So we got to jump in, have a little bourbon, and talk about Drake May. And let's fuck around and find out. Jaden Daniels being up above 115 across the board on 20 yards down the field or more supports what you saw on tape when yep. we talked about the Ole Miss game. Oh, man. One of the more re- ridiculous downfield throwers and it almost pairs perfectly with the fact that he is such an athletic runaround guy oh yeah i'm a believer in Jaden daniels me too as a really good player i saw a former nfl gm call him uh you know lamar jackson but a better thrower which is kind of in line with what what you said yep but you see the the thing that's going viral bro buddy's elbow yeah oh my god look at that look at his elbow like what is that Bro, his elbow looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, bro. It looks like a dinosaur. It looks like his elbow's dislocated and his full forearm shifted back. But I guess this is what a bursa sac uh, that you have in all your joints. If if it gets inflamed, I guess it could fill with fluid. And that's what doctors are saying it is. It's really of no concern. But it looks like a fucking alien. Yeah, that looks... That looked crazy. When I saw that immediately, I was like, damn, is that going to hurt his draft stock? But from the from the doctors that I read that gave their take said that it's more of a discomfort thing and not yeah. so much of a long-term damage thing. Yeah. <laughs> how many medical checks or how many doctors, if you were sitting there with that number two overall pick, how many doctors are you checking on to go to go to Jane Daniels? If I'm if I'm the GM or the, the head coach, I'm like, hey, X-ray it again. <laughs> MRI, X-ray, full butt. I need it again. I know you said it was a, a bursa sack. I need another x-ray. Yeah. More angles. Like, are we sure? He says he's got a super weenus, bro. We, we, like, dude is growing a dick out of his elbow. What we, is that? Weenus poking out. Put that back crazy. on screen. <laughs> Chat said they wouldn't want to catch an elbow from him. What? <laughs> back. He will. Con- you will get concussed immediately. No, nah, not concussion is not enough. You will be CTSPN. <laughs> yes, you, you will get impaled by that penis out of his elbow. What the fuck is that thing? That's how you kill so Diddy right there. To kill the diddler. Bro, I, I, I can't make sense of it. And honestly, like, I know that they're saying it's not a big deal. But if I'm sitting there at number two, if there was ever any debate, if I'm going Drake May or Jaden Daniels, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, call me whatever. That's, that's I, enough for me. I just I just can't do it. I've seen enough. Um, I've heard enough. It It is what it is. But what, where is it? I'm looking at another picture. It's gone. Yeah. Well, I guess it's only like in that particular moment. Like, it. I don't know. I don't, I don't either. Know. I, I was going to pretend to be a doctor. <laughs> He's got a ball sack hanging from his elbow. Yeah. Well, I just I almost want to feel it. No, Diddy. I almost want to know if it if it is like fluidy or if it's bony, bro, because I think that would impact his draft. <laughs> how hard is his elbow penis? That's yeah. what Chris wants to know. How hard is, is it the- flaccid or is it erect? How hard is the weenus? <laughs> how hard is the elbow weenus? Yeah, no, I um, no, I, I don't know. I don't either. It does. It does concern me. But uh, an interesting moment from Quinn Ewers. I thought this was fascinating. Obviously, when you look at kind of the draft stuff, this is what he had to say about coming back for another year. You know, I had some people put together a pretty good chart on, you know, obviously the more you play and the more experience you have, the better you end up playing in the and succeeding in the, in the NFL. And I just wanted to put myself in a better spot to be able to succeed at a, at a high level once I you know, hopefully get there. So um, just more experience. And then, you know, I feel like I've been, been rushing my entire life. So just take a year, slow it down um, and not, not rush things. You know, I skipped my senior year. That went by fast. Um, I was at Ohio State for a semester or so. It all went by fast also. So just take 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 my time throughout the whole process and, you know, enjoy being here and not <clears throat> just being present and not, not looking too far forward. Quinn, what challenges did you have? I think it's great. Good I think stuff. it's great. Should he, I mean, first of all, it's really cool because everybody accused him of, of rushing through things, of, you know, kind of 
you know, trying to get to Ohio State when he did so mm-hmm. early and trying to like rush to the NFL. It was really, it, it, you know, I think you talked about enough how cool it is that he did come back for the year because he would have been a first rounder. I yeah, think. I think he would have been late first rounder. And honestly, I, I he fucked up too many times. Right. Like foregoing his senior year, showing up midway through training camp, and then leaving Ohio State like any other result was possible considering what I just said that he did. Like it just, I don't fault him entirely for leaving Ohio State. I do. I do. I, I fault him in the respect that, yeah, I mean, he he came, he came late. But also, when you're being told that, like, Kyle McCord and Jack Miller won't ever play here and you can't get any of those reps, I think they could have figured out a way to get him some reps, you know? Yeah, I mean, they could have managed reps better. But you're also, the least of their concern, they're trying to win football games right now. Yeah. And should they have? Absolutely. But ultimately, you sh- he shouldn't have forego- He shouldn't have skipped his senior year and showed up in the middle of training camp. Like, that, that was just stupid. So he, he skipped his senior year, rushed all that. Then he didn't get the attention he wanted as a freshman, so he dipped up out of Columbus. It was just stupid. It was just a dumb decision. I'm glad that he's grown wiser because this was a smart decision. Slow it down. Focus on develop development. Set yourself up for success in the NFL. Don't just go to the NFL because you go to you can go to the NFL. Like Let's make sure maybe you maximize your college career, maximize your value and development. Go to the NFL and be a great one. Let's, let's try that out. If... If things were different, and maybe if the kid was from a different area, people would be accusing the people in his circle of trying to force him to the NFL so he can make the money so he can get them cash. That, that, that kind of would have been what was said. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that it feels like either he's making the decision for himself or Sark got to him. Sark knows. Like, look, like you, you can rush this thing if you want, yeah. but you're going to be developed here, and really you're going to make it on the back end and and come come be a project to come by in. It's really good to me that he bought into Texas, and it makes me feel good about his career moving forward. I well, guess, yeah, for sure. And, and NIL helps, right? Yeah. When you, when you, because I would talk to players all the time. They were right on that fringe. Should they go? Should they come back? And I would talk to them about coming back for one year is an investment, right? You're investing that you can, you'll grind, you'll work, you'll develop to be a much higher draft pick, and you're going to make more money. Well, nowadays you can really sell that because it's like, and you're going to make seven figures, like, yeah. and you're going to make a million dollars. To Quinn Ewers. Like, you're going to make a million dollars, so it's not that hard of an investment. Like, you're getting paid pretty decent, and then invest in yourself. I'm I'm, I'm happy for Quinn, and I do want to talk about him, but I do want to get a quick word from our partner that come right back. All right, we'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army, when we don't have ads, we just self-promote. They're kind of narcissistic, I guess. But if you love the show, you love the platform, you love the growth, where we're going, here's a great way for you to support us. Menace2Merch.com. The number two. We have like 10 or 12 items on there right, right now. The rebrand. You see the shirt I'm wearing. Kind of the Menace Superman shirt. It's got the down the spine. It's got Menace to Sports, um, which you can see on the website. But um, we priced everything fairly low. This is more about promotion and kind of getting you guys to rep our brand across the country. So we got a, we got female gear. We got a, bath- a one-piece bathing suit. Uh, don't I actually need to take the two-piece off. It's fucking awful. We got a sample, so don't order that. But we're, we're quality control right now. We got hoodies. We got cutoff shirts. We got workout shirts. This is a fitness shirt. It's outstanding. And I'm going to add more stuff this week. So there's about be about 20 items. Um, takes a couple weeks to get to you. But go go support us. Go to menacetomerch.com and rock the brand. Rebrand. Should Quinn Ewers be the early favorite to be the first quarterback off the board next year? I don't know. Carson Beck was really good. Right. Um, I, I think I think Quinn Ewers absolutely could play himself into that spot. But right now, it, for me, it's Carson Beck. And Quinn's probably second. Yeah. But but Carson Beck was just so fucking good this past year. So my, my quote-unquote way too early first rounders, I think Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers, and Shador. Yeah. I, I think those are the three that I expect for sure. for first rounders. Um, speaking of first rounders, Bama, two first round corners. And the debate is heating up. Who would you want? Who is going to go first? What do you got, Zach? How you feeling? Does this change your belief on who should be the first of the two, Terry and Arnold or Kool-Aid McKinnistry? No, I mean, I think they both are really good. They're both first-round corners. I, I like Kool-Aid better on film. That's all. Um, and it's you're talking about splitting hairs. This is like, who do you like better? Marshawn Lattimore or Denzel Ward? Like, I don't know. Fucking both of them, really. It's like, like, it's like who do you like more of the Cavender twins? <laughs> right. It's like, I don't know. They're pretty similar to me. Yeah. Um, I like both of them. I, I think Kool-Aid's just maybe slightly better. Mm-hmm. So I'm taking Kool-Aid. If I have both options, I'm taking Kool-Aid. Plus, I want his name. I want him to be on my roster. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they're twins, so who's more marketable? 
Right. Like, you know, Kool-Aid's more marketable, but it's it's actually amazing how similar they are. I mean, you're talking about, I mean, obviously, Terran Arnold had the, you know, more interceptions, but more targets his way yeah. at six. They both had 20 and 21 pass breakups. And then, you know, pass rating loud when targeted at 63 and 66. Yeah. That's so fucking close. Dog. It's like Gary on, splitting hairs. It really is. And Gary on Conley talked about this. Uh, when I think when he came on the show, uh, this is back whenever the last time he came on the about show a year and a half ago, miss you GC. Yeah. And, and, and Gary on made a point that he was like, um, I, I was like the lesser corner. So I got targeted a shitload because of Eli. Eli Apple was regarded yeah. as the better corner. And Marshawn, too. Well, Marshawn was hurt all the time that year. Oh, uh, well, but, like, what, sixth? I was thinking about the, his last year before the draft. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about when he got when he got put on. Okay. It was Eli and Gary on, and everyone was like, oh, Eli was this established guy, going to be a first-rounder, so they tried to pick on Gary on, and he was able to make oh, a ton of plays, and his draft stock, his stock, his value went through the roof. And he was like, that's for real how I got put on because nobody was trying to throw at Eli, so they threw it to me all the time. And that's kind of what happened to Terry on Arnold. And he did like Gary on did, stepped up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. But going into the year, everyone's like, damn, Kool-Aid's really good. Let's pick on Terry on Arnold. And they fucked around and found out he's pretty good too. Yeah, and then, so then they didn't pick on anybody. They picked no. on a linebacker. <laughs> right, then they picked on fucking the run game. Um, PFF dropped their top 10 returning safeties. I found this interesting, Zach. I want to I get your thoughts on what you noticed from this list first. Number one, we got Caleb Downs. Number two, Malachi Starks. You got uh, the Dylan kid from Purdue, Xavier Watts from Notre Dame, Kevin Winston from Penn State, Xavier Nwamka from um, Iowa, Rod Moore, who just got hurt from Michigan, Hunter Wooler from Wisconsin, Keon Sab at Bama, and then Burks from West Virginia. What do you notice about this? That's uh, only two SEC players? That's a lot of Midwest love in that That's a group. lot of Midwest love right there. Shout out to the Big Ten and Notre Dame, who should be in the Big Ten. I mean, Purdue has the third best safety in college football. That's outstanding. One, I think they got the number one uh, slot right. Caleb yeah. Downs, I think, will be the best safety in the country. I love Malachi Starks also. Man, Rod Moore, and seeing Rod Moore and Keon Saab's name on that list, if I'm Michigan fans, that, that one hurts. I mean, awful that Rod Moore got injured and and – Double down on salt in the wound that Keon Saab would have been the guy that filled that role, but he transferred to Bama, and he's right there on the list too. Dog, that's a lot of Big Ten love. So I'm just saying it's really one Big Ten. I guess Caleb Downs was a, an SEC player that transferred, but right. Keon Saab was a Michigan guy. It's, yeah, I mean, like, and, and the fact that that Iowa just keeps pumping out these DBs is crazy. Dog. Crazy. Like they're gonna have a top ten safety in college football and a top ten corner, and um, and neither of them are dark skin, and, and you know, so <laughs> it's just you know news news to the whole world. Um, Caleb, and you know who didn't make this list? Who I think probably played good enough to make this list is Lathan Ransom, the most underrated safety in college football. Uh, probably. Like I thought, Lathan Ransom was really fucking good last year. Yeah, he was really good, and, and he, he was, doesn't make a lot of wow plays, right? Yeah, he doesn't. He made some he made some wild plays on special teams the year before. Mm -hmm. Um, but I thought Lathan was was really good. And honestly, I think we forgot about Lathan a little bit because Jordan Hancock started filling B gaps. Right. right. It's like, okay, Lathan's not there anymore. But and, and here's the other thing, and I don't know any I'm gonna say this, and this is not about this single player, but Aubrey Bank Burks from West Virginia, don't know anything about him. Might be a, the best safety ever, might be a first rounder. I find it hard to believe he's better than Lathan Ransom. I'm glad you said Like, that, really hard to believe. I'm going to need to see that film. Yeah, you got to cut on some film because I don't believe you. No. <laughs> you know. But sometimes like, these lists go crazy. Like, Dylan Thieneman. Mm -hmm. Sure, he's a really good player. If he transferred to Ohio State, would he start? No. I'm saying no. I don't think so. And maybe he's maybe he's a first-rounder. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I Again, this is a... This is not some educated take. I'm just saying when I see these lists, and when I was coaching, I would see them too. In the NFL draft, I would watch it like Corey Coleman. Corey Coleman got drafted before Michael Thomas. I'm like, I hate to break it to you. Corey Coleman's playing 15 snaps a game if he played for me. He's lucky his ass went to Baylor. And maybe maybe I maybe I, I put too much weight into certain games, but I think the Kevin Winston kid's probably better than the Thieneman kid. But I, I mean, I admit, I will admit though, I've watched more Penn State. Well, yeah, obviously. Than I have, than I have Purdue. Who watches Purdue game film? Not me. Um, the I, I, well, I think that's the kid who was supposed to be over the top on. I let me let me look that up before I fuck it up because obviously right. Brandon has had the long touchdown between the safety and the corner, and we want to know what the who is who right. before we uh, get things going. Big Xavier Watts kid played out of his mind this year. I mean, obviously, like that whole Notre Dame secondary was. You know, in the conversation for best in America, they were <laughs> yeah. really fucking good. So I can see that. Um, the Xavier Wompke kid, <laughs> five star safety, bro, from their state, and Ohio State couldn't get him. 
Crazy. Nuts. That's one of the things that gets used against Perry Eliano. But, you know, you know how it goes. Um, Zach, we need some more Super Chats, then get a word from our partner and then talk about Ohio State. Yeah, I'm remember, excited about this next Ohio State topic. My, like, Zach, like, so excited. Zach's chomping at the bit. Like, so excited. <laughs> Brian, thanks for the five. What college football team has the most bandwagon fans, in your honest opinion? Who bandwagon fans like how like jump on jump off? Mm -hmm. mm. Well, it felt like until recently Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Um. Honestly, like if I look back in the last ten years, it felt like Oregon. Because where did these Oregon fans come from? Yeah, Oregon's a good one too. Oregon, Bama, probably, but then they were just so dominant for so long they didn't have to jump off the bandwagon, so they yeah. became actual fans. The other thing is like. Like Georgia fans, for instance, I don't think they're bandwagon fans. Like they, they ride or die, but they just got a reason to be loud, and now they're really loud, right? You got the, got the megaphone. Yeah, they, somebody handed them a megaphone, and now we hear them a lot. I think they were always there. They were just like shunned in the corner, hiding from society. Well, that's how I feel about Michigan fans. Like I feel like yeah. Michigan fans were shunned and hiding, which they were, and that's why you see before you argue with the Twitter account, look and see what year the account was formed. If right. it says November twenty twenty one, don't argue. But that's like it just get loud and honestly like i think college football less than any other sport deals with less bandwagon fans yeah i do too like nfl bandwagon fans. What are we about? i got the number one bandwagon fan right over here what the fuck you looking at <laughs> you got a mirror over there yeah you're looking in that fucking grease board look at yourself i was gonna Motherfucker's say there's a steelers fan all of a sudden i've uh, been that man black this, and this yellow man was on a hang glider from one bandwagon to the other i know all the worst of black and yellow bro how would you explain that because you like the song? <laughs> I'm saying that song came out like The 10. only words are black and yellow, black and yellow. Hey, hey, look, I'm just coming with facts, man. You can try that stupid narrative. It won't work here. What I was going to say is the Chiefs got all these fans out of nowhere. Yeah, that's for and sure. And that was, that was a wild time. The Warriors never had – they had they had less than three fans. I don't even, I don't even know who the Warriors were until they, until they went off. The Warriors, their whole fan base is the bandwagon. Yeah, but that's the NBA. They're a bunch mm -hmm. of bitches. <laughs> Players, coaches, all of them. Yeah, so. Fans for sure. Steelers and, and Chiefs, man. Those are the two. We're oh, not Steelers. I mean, Warriors. What are you talking about? I fucked it up. I fucked it up. I was trying to say, like, not the Steelers. Whoops. Uh, Austin, thanks for the five. Can you explain what a coach does if he's not play calling? I know it's more than just timeouts and fourth downs. How involved <laughs> in the plays are they? I mean, they're involved, right? There's a lot of conversation in between series about, what, like, what do we like? What are we going to? Like, they're managing the whatever the, their respective side of the ball right and they're 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 asking hard questions like what the fuck happened like like they're, they're the one that's like quality controlling the whole time but they, they just don't call the physical play right and sometimes they do like urban used to throw plays out he couldn't call that motherfucker but he would tell tom hey tom hey run that run that trick play <laughs> or hey take a shot to Devin." He didn't know what. Are there ever, I, I was thinking about the coaches that like on game days like do the very least like it's like almost like a day off like like, did you ever experience any of those? Like, uh, what is Coach Key doing on game day, bro? Up in oh, the I box? Mean, no, I mean that's you're you're the you're the information gatherers. If you're in the box, I mean you have to see the field, you have to know what happened, you have to diagram everything up. Like you're working, okay. And like if you're on the field, you're coaching, you're actively coaching, making adjustments, substitutions in between series. You're trying to make sure everyone's coached up, knows what to do, so they can perform well. So on no the next one's series. just chilling. Nobody's just chilling. I mean, your intern is, like, <laughs> unless it's stallions. Less than Stallions, he's working his 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 little butt off. Shout out Connor, bro. I wonder what he's up to these days, man. <laughs> we need a wellness check on old Connor Stallions. That's we, for sure. We do. <laughs> MCU, thanks for the 10. Jim has been coaching for nearly 20 years. Comparing his last five to Day's first five as a head coach is ridiculous without considering the cheating. That's Day's sure. first five are on par with any in history. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's but let's not act like Ryan Day took over a program and had to build it. Harbaugh took over a failing program and had to bit rebuild it. Ryan took over a thriving program. Yeah, like, like, but I agree with everything that was just said. Like, how would Ryan do at Stanford, I guess, is, is right. a good question. How would he have done if he got hired at Michigan? Great question. We don't know the answer, but I'm just saying is the, we're comparing apples and oranges to an extent. Yeah, I do think Ryan is a, is a really good coach. I think he's got to figure out how to be a really great coach. And yeah. I, I think sometimes I think the politics of being the head coach of Ohio State get in the way of him displaying his full coaching ability. Yeah. And I think he puts those in, in the way himself. Yeah, I do too. Like, you know what it sounds like? I had this brought up to me. It's like the current state of Ohio State sounds like how previous Texas coaches talked about all the politics they had to deal with with boosters when they were there. Mm -hmm. And so, and and you know, like, 
does Ryan have a big enough stick to say, fuck no, like Urban did? Not yet. And how do you get the big enough stick? Win one. You take the Viagra, and the Viagra is the natty. That's it. Compare Jim's first this five. This is what I'm saying. It, Ryan's it's not a good five. argument. Jim Harbaugh took over a program that was that was in disarray. Mm-hmm. Ryan Day took over a fucking Cadillac, a Corvette. Like That's why I believe Jim Harbaugh finally built his program up about the time Ryan took over where it was a competitive, like somewhat even playing field. And, I, and it might have taken him way too long. He was a complete failure before that. I'm with all that. But you can't compare Ryan's first five to Jim's first five because they took over wildly different situations and teams. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to do. I mean, I think you can compare Kirby's first five to Ryan's first five. That's fair. I think you can compare Ryan's first five to Lincoln's first five. I mean, you can compare Ryan's first five to Kalen DeBoer's first five in five years. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's a really good way to put it. <laughs> Todd, thanks for the five. I think the freshmen play. Think the freshmen play much in the spring game, or will it be Howard versus Brown showing to figure out who should be the starter for game one? I think you're going to see everybody, and pretty evenly, because this is for the fans. I've yeah. said it before. That last spring scrimmage is what really matters. The spring games for the fans and the players to have fun, play in front of a big crowd. You're going to see all four of the five of the quarterbacks. I guess. I think you'll see a much less of Aaron Nolan than anyone. Mike, thank you for the five. Just booked my room in Columbus. It's going down. Been going hard in the gym. No diddy. Can't wait to see you, Mike. Hey, same, dude. I can't wait to hang out at Yogi's on April 12th. Live show, 11 a.m. Doors open. Get your ass there. I just want to hang out with with all all our people. That's all. I just want to hang out with the Army. Yeah, honestly, my favorite thing is like to get through the show and then hang out with everybody afterwards. Yeah, that's the best part. The live show is cool, I guess, for for you guys. And it's cool for us. It's just a different, different atmosphere. But the real... Like, I enjoy the shit out of afterwards. Talking to people, having a drink, hanging out. Like, you get to meet, I don't know if my kids will be there. They were at the last one. You get to meet Justine. You get to meet, you know, all the the behind-the-scenes people. Pat. It's just just cool to hang out. Yeah. I think it's weird for me, like, because I feel like we're celebrities when we're up there. But really, I just want to, like, talk to everybody. I just want to hang out. Yeah, because we're definitely not celebrities in my eyes, at least. Well, you're you're a celebrity. I don't know about that. I know about that. <laughs> Brother, every time we go out, you get recognized like four or five times. <laughs> so that doesn't happen to no regular fucking person. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> uh, I believe you already said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showtime. Thanks for the five. A member. Uh, Coach, how far apart would you say Devin Brown's skill set is from Joe Burrow while at Ohio State? I mean, I don't think – I mean, he's not there yet. But keep in mind, Joe Burrow was not the Joe Burrow we know when he was at Ohio State. He was a ways away from that. Joe Burrow was not the Joe Burrow we know his first year at LSU. So, like, saying that putting them in the same conversation is not completely unfair because Joe Burrow had a massive developmental level up the two, you know, the two years after he left Ohio State. I think Devin is not quite as good as Joe, but he's he's right there. I think the things that make Joe great aren't the skill set things, right? I think the things that make Joe great are the competitive toughness, the competitive excellence, the competitive stamina that he has. Yeah. I mean, I think that kind of thing takes a while to like cultivate in terms of like in line with your development physically. I'd say probably right now physically, Devin's probably a little a little bigger, I think. Mm-hmm. Probably a little bit of a stronger arm, but skills like I, I just I think this like like does does Joe Burrow have any extraordinary skill sets or is it kind of the things that you look at Tom Brady like that's what makes Tom Brady great. Like, Joe Burrow has one thing that most don't have, and that is the swagger. Some mm-hmm. call it big dick energy. Yeah. The massive cock he's swinging when he goes on the field. Like, this man walks on the field like, this is my field. You have no chance of stopping me. And it's that intangible swagger that he plays with. He 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 grew confident. It's the separator. It really is like he watching him in 20, what is it? 2019 mm-hmm. was probably my favorite year watching a, a quarterback ever. Cause he was just, he owned everybody. You, there's nothing you could do to stop him. You could blitz him. You could simulate pressures. You could make him scramble, get him out of the pocket. No matter what you did, he was lethal. And he, and he had the game the year before Zach that you could see like in his brain, all the chips falling into the right place. Yep. And it wasn't the UCF game. No. It was the Georgia game. Yeah. They were massive underdogs. And you could see the moment in the second quarter where all of a sudden the game slowed down and he started dicing shit up and talking a little bit. Yeah. And that is when 
it all flipped for him. But yeah. in terms of like like before that, he was not very good in eighteen. No, I mean that he was just happened. he was not he was just good. He wasn't yeah. the guy we know now. <clears throat> he figured out he could take over a game. Yeah, and then and then from then on, to your point, every game he stepped into, it was I'm going to take this game over. And I think that's that's not that's not a skill set thing. That is a a mentality thing. Yeah, you want to get. Intangibles. Yeah. All right, we got to get a commercial break. Last one. We'll be right back after this. What makes this platform different from others outside of the fact we're unfiltered? And I actually worked in college football and might might know a little bit about the sport and about the game. Is we open the doors and open the windows and let you inside under the hood in college football. And the best way to do that is our film breakdowns. If YouTube would let us put them out publicly, we would make it all free. But they dig us with a copyright every time. Bourbon and Balls, our off-season project. Every Tuesday night, I pick a bourbon, and at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live and do a live breakdown, interactive. You ask questions. It's all 22 coaches film, so it's not film you, you can see anywhere else. It's not TV copy. This is truly what coaches use, what I used for 15 years of coach college football. And we break down a topic. We've done a Will full Will Howard breakdown, breaking down his game, what he was going to add to the Buckeyes. We did the Michigan National Championship game. There's over... 200 game breakdowns in our library. If you want to learn college football at an, in an entirely different way, it's only 20 bucks a month. Or the best deal, if you want to do it, is you can lock it in right now with a 10% discount on patreon.com forward slash menace to sports. And you can get a whole year's worth. That'll include all next season when we break down up to five games a week. We really give you the insight and information you need to be knowledgeable about college football. Because several times, a, a, a sack will happen. And you watch on TV, you're like, God, this O-line sucks. Then you get the coaches film and watch, and they blocked the five guys. They were supposed to block the running back, just released, and was supposed to block a blitzing corner. It was really on the running back. But in your mind, you think the O-line sucks. It's always good to have quality information, and it's entertaining as shit. Drink a little bourbon, hang out with us all offseason, and then get ready for the 2024 college football season. Possibly a nice little run for the Buckeyes on Patreon. Links in the bio. Come hang out with us. My favorite day of the week, bourbon and ball night, Tuesday nights. Here's from one of the Michigan guys, EJ Holland. Uh, Mike Hart had just one top 200 2025 running back visit Michigan in the fall. Tony has had three on campus this week alone. Yeah. Watch out now. I thought he couldn't. Rec- <laughs> no, well, right. getting, on, getting, getting them on campus is a big deal, but you, you got to land them too. It's, it, 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 it is, it's just funny to see how this is going to unfold because if he does have recruiting success at – at Michigan, it's going to turn out into another war. Yeah, um, and, and we got to be careful because these Ohio State fans will hate me because that's yeah. my guy. I mean, I'm sorry, he's a good friend of mine. No, I, I think he can recruit. I'm I'm interested to see kind of what their running back room looks like, and I I, I do think it it's probably a little easier to recruit running backs to Michigan than it is Ohio State. That's what I said. Like, you know how much easier it is to recruit to Michigan, other than the fact that like I think Columbus is better than Ann Arbor, but like they yeah. hand it to you every play. <laughs> like, who doesn't want to be that guy? <laughs> Yeah, they do, especially with Sharon Moore. That's what I said. You thought Harbaugh handed to the running backs a lot. They just hired the guy who didn't throw a pass in the whole second half of the Penn State game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, this is great. The playmaker, thanks for the five. FYI, Danny Cannell is going to the same volleyball tournament in Chicago this weekend. No Would way. love to see that interaction. Oh, man, Brother. if I can make that happen. Not your boy, Danny. Danny Cannell. <laughs> Bro, here's the thing. Like, you guys might get along. You guys can bond over, like, Florida State. Yeah, absolutely. He's a Florida State guy. Yeah, he is. Giants guy, too. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like him. So. (laughs) What a natty. He did do that. He did do that. I think he said they would have went back-to-back if Randy Moss was allowed to play. Oh, there's no doubt. Peter Work and Randy Moss. Ooh, buddy. <laughs> he said he was just the best the best freshman he'd ever seen. Ever. Like, just, like, out there doing shit that didn't make any sense. Honestly, the the stuff that he was saying about, never mind. What's he doing now? Because ESPN fired him, right? Does he have a show still? Bro, he's on the cover three. Oh, yeah. Like, I guess like I know all of our competitors. I don't know any of them. Like, I, I study Chris. Them. Chris will get us in a beef with somebody. I'm like, and I, every time I'll be like, okay, who? Do, now I know who Danny Cannell is, but yeah. I'll be like, who the fuck is that? Well, it's like like who's where because it's like honestly the media stuff is like sports. Like someone yeah. someone someone get traded twice. Like. Like Zach, we had beef with them from that, that, that. So now that he's been traded, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I got smoke for everybody. Everybody. Um, 
Darren, thanks for the five. What's a good time to get a seat at Yogi's on the 12th? I, well, I, I'll be there when doors open at 11. I mean, you know, it's never – we've always had a line, yeah. and this is going to be our biggest live event yet. There's always been a line, but I'm talking like, you know, eight, ten people, nothing crazy. But it always fills up before showtime. I would imagine this one's going to fill up a lot sooner. So, yeah. I mean – I get there early. They opened the doors a little bit early for us last time. Yeah, they I did. I don't know if they'll do it this time, but I, I don't think they will. They like to just start the rush to, so that it's not like a massive, so, you know, two hundred people come in at once and everybody wants a drink. So I think they'd rather open early, but I'm not promising that. Yeah. Um, I would get there before eleven. I think if you get there before eleven, you should have a seat. Right. I agree. MCU Drew, thanks for the five. Matt Harmon's reception percentage graded Marv as an elite separator. His charts have been predicting NFL success. Huh, I would I would send that to me. No, no one's not. I, didn't, I never said Marv wouldn't be successful in the NFL. I think he absolutely will be, but he has not separated a lot. Yeah, the elite separator. I've studied every game. You can go watch all of the breakdowns. I mean, this is one of those fuck around and find out. I don't give a fuck what that man's chart says. I got 13 game films broken down every single play. I must, I must have missed that chart. I'd like to see it, though. Someone sent it to me because that, that is the stuff that I'm into. Yeah. Oh, I love analytics, but yeah. I also love film better. All right. Rose, thanks for the two. Roby telling Urban to cram it is wild. Wow. I love it. I mean, we've, I've seen a, a, only a couple players. Philly Brown did it. If he's watching, he did it in the stretch lines one time. Almost got me fired. <laughs> um, Roby did it. CJ Barnett, who's we know CJ now. He's like the black stripe guy at, at, at Ohio State, like player personnel. Great dude, but man, he didn't like to practice hard either. And he punted a ball one time and during team versus scouts because Urban pissed him off. <laughs> Texas Buckeye, thanks for the two. Would yours have been more successful at Ohio State? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's obviously impossible to predict. Probably. I mean, I think you have a natty right now. I do too. Like, um, like if it was him instead of Kyle McCord. <laughs> yeah, I you know, that could be. Right, because I mean that's what it would that's what it would have been. Yeah, I mean, if they beat Michigan, they probably win it all. Yeah. With a better quarterback. Mike, thanks for the five. <laughs> we all need to know what team up north is paying because you've been capping at a ridiculous rate. All I want to know, JJ flashes, no look pass from Shaq. All right, we'll see. I'm not I'm not capping. I bro I broke down JJ McCarthy several times. I just broke one down. Yeah. I, I think he's got a real chance. I know that. I people don't, don't like that. Buckeye I, fans don't like that. I don't think he has a real chance because I'm not sure he does anything better than Zach Wilson. I mean, the intangibles certainly are better than Zach Wilson. Yeah, well, but but again, like if Zach wasn't <laughs> sleeping with moms, could he have been a, a good pro? <laughs> Probably not. I don't think so. <laughs> Pat, thanks for the 10. Blatant cheating, question mark. One year, 44 seniors with what, COVID, six-year seniors, cheating, two-thirds of the season, not playing starters, second half, reduce injuries, kept the team fresh. The cheating cancels all props. Day, all day, every day. Every day. I, I, I'm with that. Yeah. Tristan, thanks for the two. Is that a THC sponsor making a comeback? What THC sponsor? I don't know. But Did we have a THC sponsor? Uh, we had a uh, something else back in the day, but. It is what it is. I don't, I don't have a clue, but um, <laughs> but I'm ready to talk about some Ohio State, bro. Because Bjork came out and said he wants state of the art, world class football facility to this, be. This is the best part to be built. Something to make the SEC and NFL drool over. I mean, God, that just that 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 gets me hard. Yeah, it, like we haven't had this at Ohio State ever. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know the timeline of it, right? This goes all the way back to Woody Hayes. I used to talk to my grandfather about it because Woody Hayes was old school. Didn't want to raise. like He made like $39,000 as the head coach at Ohio State. Never, Jeez. His assistants didn't make shit. And he didn't want a nice facility. He felt like that would make, make his team soft. And so he was there forever. Now, that set Ohio State back because everyone else was upgrading at a ridiculous clip. Like salaries are going up. And Woody said no to all of it. My grandfather got hired and said, hey, I want to pay my assistants more. He's trying to level up the program. I want to, we, let's talk about a new facility. And Ohio State was like, Jesus, who's this guy trying to spend all our money? We're trying to pocket it all. So that set the culture? Set the culture. And they've been behind ever since. And that way of thinking has been in Columbus ever since Woody Hayes. It really has. I mean, they built the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, and they built it so that it, they could upgrade and build, build it up, second stories and all this shit. That's how they designed it. And then for fucking 30 years, they haven't done a damn thing. 
I mean, they paint the walls every now and then. That's about it. I love this mentality coming to Columbus. You want to level up the Buckeyes? Bring that SEC mentality to Columbus. York feels very fuck the other sports. This is the cash cow. We got to treat it as so. Mm -hmm. It's time, Zach. The one big complaint, one of the biggest complaints you've had about Gene has been about the facilities. I did, I did like how he kind of lobbed Gene a compliment. He was like, oh, Gene was in talks about a new facility and where to put it. But, I, you know, he's going to be more aggressive in pushing that agenda forward. Like, like Gene started this, kind of. Yeah. Probably wasn't ever going to do it, though. I just feel like he doesn't want to smash Bro's entire legacy in, like, six months. But he's doing, a, I mean, shit, doing a good job, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. That'll help in recruiting, though, right? Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just, it helps in every, every facet of the program. Um, Ohio State defense. This defense maybe feels like the most flexible or multiple defense Ohio State's had in a long time. Yeah. I guess I want to ask you, how would you compare them to 2019? Any similarities and where are they different? Um, well, I mean, 2019 had Chase Young, right? <laughs> so let's start there. Right. <laughs> Biggest difference is that War Daddy defensive end, pass rusher, like quarterbacks were, were scared. They walked into games like, geez, where's this freak at? We don't have that. At, at least we haven't seen that from anyone on this defense yet. That's the biggest difference. Now, as far as like secondary, I think it's going to be very comparable. I think you could, you might be able to make the argument after this year that this secondary is better than 2019, which is a wild thing to say, right? I guess who in this secondary would start on the 19 team? Well, let's pull up. I, I'd have to have the depth chart. Well, I know the 19 secondary off the rip. So it was uh, Sean Wade, yeah. Okuda, Arnett, Fuller. And then Pete rolled back and did all kinds of shit because Pete is Pete. Yeah, Pete was crazy. So your secondary in 2019, Damon Arnett and Jeff Okuda were your two corners. Um, I, I think that Denzel Burke would definitely start over Damon Arnett. Okay. I don't think I don't. Uh, I think Jeff Okuda would be the other starting corner. Yeah, that's fair. Sean Wade at nickel was he was ridiculous. I I'm picking Jordan Hancock. Are you? Absolutely. Wow. Jordan Hancock's one of my favorite players on this defense, without a doubt. Um, and then strong safety, Brennan White. I mean, that, whoever you want to pick, Lathan Ransom or Caleb Downs is definitely. Well, I don't think they started White. Oh, yeah. That's the year he was the MVP of the Rose Bowl. No, it's not. That was that was the next year. The, they, 2020? They, no, the year before. They weren't in the Rose Bowl in 19. Remember, 19, they uh, lost to Clemson. Lost to Clemson. Yeah. Well, he's listed right here against Nebraska as a starting safety. Yeah. So the only, because we ran that, uh, that, that, what cover three looks so like the only starting safety i guess in your eyes would have been uh jordan fuller. fuller yeah jordan fuller was a really good player i don't know if he's better than caleb downs though right i mean probably ni his <laughs> 19 was probably better than downs his last year but if we're talking about a nickel defense which i don't give a fuck what their scheme was if you're talking about it, in a nickel defense who would start mm. i think both safeties would start from this this secondary okay. and, two, and two corners i think the only person from the 19 secondary that would start on this defense is jeff okuda mm. over davis and igbenosa that's it that's that's interesting. So you would pick, I mean, do you you pick Lathan to start or yeah. Okay. Over whoever that other safety is in a nickel defense. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. No. So do you think this defense will be able to <laughs> challenge like a lot of those records set by that 19 defense? Or is Chase Young being that much better kind of the ultimate? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it all works together, right? Right. It's all a machine. All the little gears have to work together. Like you have to pressure the quarterback to do some of the things you do in coverage and, and turnovers, and it all works together. So if they can generate a pass rush. Close to 2019, I think they could be better than 2019. But that's a big if. That's a fucking. And I mean, on the other side of Chase Young, now you had Jonathan Cooper, who's yeah. an NFL starter. Like he was a really good defensive end. And then Devon Hamilton was in the middle. Yeah, who he got a 60 million dollar deal with with whoever. Like, Absolutely, like you're talking about some really really fucking good players. Now the um, linebacker linebacker position. I mean, you had Malik Harrison and Pete Warner, NFL starters, and then Tough Borland in the middle. You say the issue is they played Tough Borland so much, no doubt. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, by the way, you know who his backup was? Baron, Baron Browning, Browning, also an NFL starter. That shit's real Didn't painful. play, though. That shit's, Doesn't count. That shit's real painful. I can't believe they trotted him out there against Clemson and thought this was the best we got. I still am mad about it. Like, just just hype, hyper frustrating. Um, the quarterback scene, Zach. Mm -hmm. the quarterback thing has gotten, has hit a unique place. This morning, it started being pushed that Julian Sand has passed Evan Brown. Will Howard is probably going to be the start of the way it looks. And the topic became, if Will Howard and Julian Sand are even, would you rather go with the 6'5 veteran quarterback or the true freshman who's got a higher long-term ceiling? And it's a good question. Because if you want to win now, if they're even, you go with the veteran, right? Yeah. But for Julian Sand's long-term development, 
you go with Julian Sain, understanding there's probably going to be some freshman moments in there. You might lose a game. Now, what does Julian Sain look like? Because Will Howard's been playing college football for a decade, right? What does Julian Sain look like? Even if he has a bad game, throws a bunch of picks, like has a freshman fucking week, and they lose a game, they can still make the playoffs. What does he look like at the end of the year? Because if they're even now, Chris, if you name Julian Sain the starter, by the end of the year, he's going to be better than the Will Howard version if he gets named the starter, right? Because he's closer to his ceiling. Julian Sain just, I mean, just went, left the fucking high school science class and showed up at the Woody. Like, he's a young kid. Now, I, I'm still not buying this. I was going to say, I agree with you. And if that was the hypothetical. Yeah, I don't the, believe this, not even a, a little bit. The other part of it is, how did we arrive here when media's only watched 30 minutes of practice and they didn't even have a practice when all of this started? There was nobody on the football field. And for the first week, it was about Devin Brown being better. And now it's like he's been passed and he's transferring and we've had exactly zero scrimmages. It's all premature. It's all, this is like spring silly season. Can we call it that? Spring silly season. Like, let's get to the first scrimmage and see what happens. Is this narrative being pushed from inside the Woody, or is this just people looking for clicks and driving it out? Because it, it is, it, this morning, it hit a point where I'm like, oh, my God. Like, like we're talking about two guys that still have their black stripes on. Yeah. Are going to be one and two, and none of the other quarterbacks matter. Well, this is the thing. You never know with the beat, right? This absolutely could be leaked to, to Austin Ward from Jerry Emig, and this could be, you know, what the narrative they're trying to put out there. But it also could be, damn, our podcast numbers suck. What should we go with today? Well, let's talk about Julian saying pushing to start. And it's like, is that based on anything? We don't know. It's definitely it's definitely an, an odd part. And honestly, I think with the long season, the last thing you can do is start Julian saying and make it a break a year. Because if, if you if you start him and he gets hurt, then you set everybody back. Yeah. How many true freshmen started as a freshman in the last 10 years of college football? How many have? And and those ones well, that true have, freshman national contenders. Because like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm talking about some like an Ohio State level school. Right. There's I mean, Trevor Lawrence is the one. He didn't start game one, but he started as a freshman. But he also looked like an NFL quarterback. He was already like he was mature. He's like Chase Young of quarterbacks. Like he was fucking gigantic. Well, and they had a pretty big scare in the ACC that year. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know. He took over game five. I believe it was either game five or game six. They beat North Carolina 20 to 21 mm -hmm. in a game that was very scary. And Sam Howell almost fucking took that season from them <laughs> yeah. early. Cause he, cause there were some true freshman moments and he couldn't move the ball for a couple drives. Yeah. Which that's going to happen. If Julian Sane is the quarterback, it's, it's just inevitable. And the, <laughs> the problem with it is Trevor was able to learn and grow in the ACC. Mm-hmm. Very different landscape in the Big Ten right now. It's something to have your learning and growing moment against North Carolina where you can eke something out. If you have that learning and growing moment at Eugene. Yeah, against Oregon. Week six, which may have been the exact same week that Trevor Lawrence had his moment. It, that frightens me. Now, Julian's obviously you want to play the better quarterback, but in a make it or break it season, I turn, tend to lean on the veteran. But that doesn't mean you, you can't play both. But again, how did we get here? Because... At, like Devin's been passed by two guys who haven't had their black stripe on. Like I again, Listen, am I, am I, do I have my Devin Brown blinders on? You do to an extent. I mean, this could be reality, but here's the, the, the one thing that is reality is we haven't even had the first scrimmage yet. So none of this is, is, is worth its weight in dog shit. Like until the first scrimmage, that's when you really know, like could, could Julian say and look better in seven on seven. Could he be doing well in team right now? Yeah. It's ebbs and flows. Let them play a game situation in the first big scrimmage of spring before you start anointing people starters or buy this guy past this guy. Like this is a roller coaster of performance and of of competition. And until you play in a game like situation, you cannot crown the king. And I was going to ask you, like, do quarter is it common for quarterbacks to pass other quarterbacks without scrimmages ever happening? I mean. You could feel like, oh, this kid's really coming on. He's he's outperforming Devin, or he's outperforming this guy. But until you go into a scrimmage, that's when the lights come on, right? That's when you got to show up. That's when a freshman le might look a lot like a freshman. And all of a sudden, you said, damn, I don't know if he's going to be ready yet. Because it's one thing in first and second down play action pass against the defense period to, to drop some dimes. It's another thing to get the ball on the fucking 25 and say, all right, drive the field and score. Totally different. 
I also think that if Julian Sand is pushing for the starting job, you know what a good way to tell is? Not by the spring game, not by whatever we hear. I think it's a good way to tell because when April 15th hits, who hits the portal? Because if Julian Sand is pushing for the starting job, that would mean he's already passed Devin. That would mean he's getting close to passing Will. So if on April 15th, if that whole room hits the portal, or at least two of those guys, then I think you know, okay, this Julian Sand stuff is real. You say that, but at the same time, Let's say he's not nipping at the heels of Devin Brown and Will Howard, but he's far and away light years ahead of Lincoln Kineholtz and Aaron Nolan. Those two might hit the portal regardless. Okay. So my bad. I didn't count Aaron Nolan. I was thinking about like Devin and Lincoln. Oh, yeah. If Devin and Lincoln hit, you already know what it is. This kid's, I mean, entrenched in a battle mm -hmm. to be the starter. And if, I mean, at that <laughs> point, damn, just name Will the starter, right? Just right. name Will the starter and go from there. Because if you name Will the starter, you're not going to lose Julian. No. And that, I mean, and I don't know, how, how do you manage, like, development and competition when you're evaluating these guys in the spring? Because right now it feels like a whole lot of competition. I'm not sure who's developing or being developed. Like, Did you ever have that, you know, concern or issue when you went through things? No, I mean, I, you could develop three quarterbacks. I think at some point you're going to have to make that decision. Like, hey, it's, it's with Julian saying outperforming Lincoln and Air. They're they're probably not going to be here. So mm -hmm. so let's let's sink all of our investment into the top three. That's that's got to be what you do. What practice number in the spring are you looking at Will Howard a little bit different if he doesn't lose his black stripe by then? Like eight, nine, ten, or do you not? Care? Yeah, if he gets if he gets in double digit practices without losing his stripe, buddy. Yeah, I think he's going to lose it today. I, I think like honestly, with, I'm sure he will. With the uh, with the what. Uh, student appreciation being Saturday or Friday I, or whatever. I actually think if I was if I was Ryan Day or if I was Chip Kelly, I'm not pulling that stripe off till I watch a scrimmage. I'm gonna let him play in a scrimmage and, and make me remove his black stripe. But I also think there's like up some politics to it. Like you don't want the fan because the fan base is gonna be there on Saturday or Fuck whatever. Fuck the fan base. Bro, you know that this this group of coaches cares about the fan base. You though. watch. You watch. I bet you that some bitch will have his black stripe on in that scrimmage, and if he plays well, he'll get it off. You th I think they'll get it, take it off before then to avoid the... Uh... Shit, they're running out of time. Practice is over. <laughs> yeah. Is the video out there? Did he get it taken off today? <laughs> what Anthony Edwards say? Send the video. <laughs> no, he ain't get that bitch off. He's going to get it off Saturday if he plays well. Okay. Well, did you like the student appreciation week? That was yeah, an urban fun. thing? Okay. It's fun. How much did they show you guys? Did you guys go through a full thing, or was it more like lighting for show? Oh, no. It was full scrimmage. Oh, okay. Well, damn. I, I guess I didn't realize that. Yeah, fuck the media. Bring the bring the kids in. Let them see. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say that out there. And also, you know that like Julian Sand can't lose his before Will loses his. I would imagine not. That would start. Unless him. Will is just not that guy. If Julian loses his before Will, I'm going on Twitter and saying the depth chart is – Devin Julian and the rest of the black strike game because yeah I mean it's what it is if if Julian Sayan loses black strike before Will Howard that means the battles between Devin Brown and Julian Sayan yeah but don't worry Devin will transfer but I would if I was a quarterback coach I'd walk in Saturday morning and go hey we got two black stripes in the room guess what two men enter today one man leaves whoever performs better today is getting that stripe off the other one's not that's pressure Fucking ain't right. Pressure them. See, see what see what they do. That's 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 pressure. I do wonder how Will's handled. Well, how Will will handle the struggles if he starts? Because like at Kansas State, if you struggle, ah, you know, big kid for the team at Ohio State, brother, they're cooking them. One incompletion, they're talking about. Fuck Will. Put the freshman in. I want to see air. I want to see Julian. Oh yeah. God forbid you have a pick in those first four weeks. It's <laughs> Jover. Welcome to Buckeye Nation, baby. <laughs> it's Jover. Speed, thanks for the five. Do you think Ewers regrets leaving after seeing how bad Kyle was and how Day is one of the best quarterback developers? I think we'd have a natty and him being the top pick. I'm going to steal, what's the guy's name, Jelly Roll? I, th I think yeah. Quinn Ewers has his perspective from when he won a Grammy. There's a reason why the windshield's bigger than the rearview mirror. I don't think Quinn Ewers is thinking about regrets and what could have been. I think he's focused on what he's got to do moving forward at Texas. Now, I regret it for him because I think he would be having natty, and I think he would be in the conversation for one of you know his top five picks this year. I do think that. See, I don't, I don't know if Quinn's even. I, I think that Quinn's probably not thinking about that because he, in Quinn's eyes, he also had a chance to get to the natty yeah. the same way Ohio State had a chance. Like he was in the playoffs and lost to Washington. I, I don't think he. I mean, shit, and it's not like Sark is a Jimbo Fisher level. No, Sark has a resume over. that that actually trumps Ryan Day. Honestly, and it really, it's not close. No. 
Dylan, thanks for the five. Michigan to not make the playoff right now is minus 110. Get it before it's minus 150. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. uh, OH <laughs> Pete, the member, thanks for the five. Chris, how many Giants jerseys do you own? Don't lie. And how many Steelers jerseys do you own? I own one Giants jersey, and it was gifted to me by someone here recently. Um, I own 37 Steelers jerseys. Jeez, I knew he was going to. Any, everybody from Heinz Ward to Troy Polamalu, who was my first one. Um, I got a couple of Big Ben jerseys. Um, I have two Le'Veon Bell jerseys. I'm, I'm going to be selling them, though. Or I'm looking for an OnlyFans patch to put on it instead of the captain's patch. Um, <laughs> and then I've got 17 Justin Fields jerseys on the way. I took my 401k out of Menace of Sports and invested it into, <laughs> into Justin Fields Steelers jerseys. That's what we got. And then I got one Mr. Incredible. Ryan, thanks for the five. Can't deny Harbaugh's success. He's a great all-time coach. However, he's not winning a natty if COVID didn't happen. There's, this is a fair point because a lot of those players wouldn't have been there. Yeah, that's really real. A lot of those players wouldn't have been there. And honestly, if COVID doesn't happen and they get dicked down like, like a ditty by party State? by Ohio State, I think he gets fired. That's fair, too. I think that was the eject button. That's fair, too. Speed, thanks for the two. Neiman Lawrence, eighth grader, plays varsity high school ball. That's the kid from uh, SFE. Oh, South Florida Express? Yeah. The one that flies down on a private jet? Uh, I don't know. I feel like it, that's, their quarterback flies down on a private jet for practice and shit. Somebody told me that story. Uh, we hear all kinds of stories, dog. It's hard to keep <laughs> them in line. HC Bucky, thanks for the two. Ryan's ass is still too tight as a coach. He just needs to, needs to visit the diddler. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let him go, hey, just not, nothing to visit from the diddler couldn't fix. I don't like nut in and diddy being like in the same, you know. <laughs> I need you to pronounce a nut thin because nothing is crazy. Keo, thanks for the two. Michigan fans won't bet on this year's game. Jordan will. <laughs> Find you one that will. Find you a Jordan. That's free money. Mm -hmm. I also said that about the bet, the bet your mortgage payment on a, yeah. <laughs> on Bammer. <laughs> I did too, clearly. Ben, thanks for the five. Are we just not counting Harbaugh at Stanford when he ended USC's run with Carroll when he pulled off a 24-23 win as a 41-point underdog? Oh, that was dope. Yeah, I wasn't discounting it. No, but you know what he you know you know you know what he should have done also a couple years later? He should have beat Brandon Whedon in that big bowl game. If Andrew Luck and Brandon and Brandon Whedon battled it out and the Whedon won. Craziness. Yeah. Former Yankees pitcher. Chris, member Chris, thanks for becoming a member. Evan as well. Thank you for becoming a member. Shane, thanks for the two. Surprised by you, Zach. Jaden Daniels like Bryce Young equals NFL bust. I don't think that's I don't think totally different game. body type, totally totally different player. But we'll see, right? Yeah, I don't I don't think that's a I don't think that's a great take, Shane. When you watch a lot of Jaden Daniels, he's on schedule a good amount, and a lot of his runs are called runs. But Bryce Young, he was more creating and struggled on schedule. Like Jaden mm -hmm. Daniels in that Ole Miss game against decent corners was on schedule on time and went for fifty one. Like yeah, with, crazy. With, with, I mean, literally, if you take the five best thrown balls of this last college football <laughs> season. Just off of ball placement alone, three of them are from Jane Daniels, and two of them is from that game alone on back to back drives. Mm -hmm. Like he was, he was fitting balls in places where I don't think Bryce Young could. Yeah, he. I think they're different players. I'm not, and I think he's going to be a really good pro, also. Yeah. HC, thanks for the two. This QB talk is all premature. Stop it. I mean, define premature. We just had full college careers to evaluate. Yeah. Pre oh, you're talking about if you're talking about Ohio, Ohio State, State absolutely. I agree. Yeah. That's my whole point. Well, and I think they haven't even had a scrimmage yet, and we're addressing it because it is getting out of hand right now. Right, because the fucking timeline's going crazy with all these fucking douchebags saying this guy's going to be the starter. It's like I promise you, no one in the Woody knows who's going to be the starter right now. Yeah. Rose, thanks for the five. Heard today that Seven Eleven dropping a hot dog water seltzer this summer. Summer, y'all down or not? No, nah, but Harbaugh is. The glizzy water. The glizzy gobbler himself. The glizzy gladiator is the preferred phrase, I think, in our gotcha. community. Gotcha. Um, you want to go ahead and get us out of here? Let's get us up out of here on what is our Friday. Enjoy the day off. Sorry we can't be there to entertain you, but I got to go to Chicago. If you're in Chicago at the convention center for a volleyball tournament, come find me. Come hang out, Army. I'll be there. We appreciate you.